as you know that the definition will be when parallel rays of light they are coming from far away you are taking it as a infinity so every definition should have accommodation relaxed and the rays coming from far away so in astigmatism we can see that when parallel rays of light enter the eye with accommodation relaxed but they do not come to a single point that is a stigma so there is no point so it is a, a stigma so no single point focus but there will be formation of a line it is a type of refractive error in which the refraction varies in the different meridia of the eye now you will see in this picture the configuration of rays refracted through a toric surface we have seen that what is a strum's conoid if the corneal surface is like a spherical one just like a basketball or saucer ball it has a same curvature in all meridians all meridians means 30 degree 90 degree 60 45 all the meridians 360 degree meridians they will have a same curvature but if you happen to see a rugby ball the shape is x shaped it means the curvature is different so if it is a more curved you call it as a steep meridian if it is a small curve you call it as a flat meridian so the meridians are different for a rugby ball and if it happens to the cornea you call it as a it has a different curvatures in different meridian we have found that when the refraction refraction means bending of rays we have seen the properties of light that is a reflection and refraction refraction is the bending of light so when the light is bending from different curvature it will have a different point of meeting after passing the light through a medium so when it passes through a toric surface it means the vertical meridian will have a different type of refraction and the horizontal meridian will have a different type of refraction so their meeting point will be different and they will form a focal line so the shape of bundle of light rays at different levels will cause a formation of a strum's conoid and we will have a different lines of interception on the retina so there can be one line on the retina and one behind the retina or both lines will be in front of retina both lines will be behind the retina one line in front of retina and one on the back of retina accordingly you have defined the, the astigmatism we will come in later stage so the power in the horizontal plane projects a vertical focal image and the power in the vertical plane projects a horizontal focal line image we have seen this in strum's conoid this is the important figure you have to remember and you have to draw in your theory examination when there will be a short note for the strum's conoid so refraction of light taking place at a toric surface this is called as a conoid of strum and the focal lines are two focal lines you can see in front of the retina on the retina or behind the retina the rays of light entering in the eye having toric curvature cannot converge to a point but form a focal line broadly there are two types of astigmatism that is regular astigmatism and irregular astigmatism so regular astigmatism means the astigmatism is regular when the refractive power changes uniformly from one meridian to another so there are two principal meridia what is the etiology of regular astigmatism it is due to a distortion of the cornea or lens 
the refractive power is not uniform in all meridians the principal meridians are the meridians of greatest and least refractive powers the amount of astigmatism is equal to the difference in refractive power of the two principal meridians what is corneal astigmatism corneal astigmatism is the result of abnormalities of curvature of cornea cornea has a curvature and we call it as a radius of curvature it constitutes the most common cause of astigmatism when there is a more curvature or a steeper curvature of cornea the cornea is steep the rays will have a more bending so the eye can go more to the myopic side and if the curvature of cornea is a flatter the eye will go for the hypermetropy from your clinical point of view you have to know what are the curvature of cornea you should know something about what is a keratoconus what is a keratoglobus and what is cornea plana because according to the curvature of cornea the patient will have a different type of refractive state the cornea has an unequal curvature on its anterior surface in lenticular astigmatism it is rare but the crystalline lens has a unequal curvature it can be because of curvature due to abnormalities of curvature of lens as seen in lenticular then there can be a positional due to tilting or oblique placement of lens as seen in subluxation and index astigmatism may occur rarely because of the different you can say change in the cortical and nuclear fibers that is the index astigmatism retinal astigmatism due to oblique placement of macula may also be seen occasionally what is total astigmatism it is the sum of corneal astigmatism and lenticular astigmatism what are the types of regular astigmatism depending upon the axis and the angle between the two principal meridia regular astigmatism can be classified into when the two principal meridians are perpendicular to each other most cases of astigmatism are called as a regular astigmatism there are three types with the rule against the rule oblique astigmatism and bioblique what it means just see this figure so you can see 0 to 180 degree that is a horizontal and vertical is a 90 and 60 and 120 degree these are the meridians what with the rule means what is with the wtr what it means in this type the two principal meridia are placed at right angles to one another but the vertical meridian is more curved than the horizontal this correction of this astigmatism will require the concave cylinder at 180 degree plus minus 20 or convex cylinder at 90 degree so if you happen to give a prescription for the correction of astigmatism with a concave cylinder at 180 degree we call it as a with the rule astigmatism so the cornea is more curved in the vertical meridian this is called a with the rule because similar astigmatism condition exists normally what is normal the vertical meridian is normally 0.25 after more convex than the horizontal meridian probably by the pressure of eyelids when the eye eye eyelids are pressing on the cornea you will have a vertical meridian is more convex the second type is against the rule astigmatism it is an astigmatism condition in which the horizontal meridian is more curved than the vertical meridian for this correction the opposite of wtr is required it means the convex cylinder at 180 degree generally this is seen in when you are doing a cataract surgery and taking the incision for the removal of cataract at the superior limbus so the curvature of cornea will be changed after the surgery and you will have against the rule astigmatism
what is oblique astigmatism it is a type of regular astigmatism where the two principal meridia are not the horizontal and vertical but these are at right angles to one another they are right angles to one another but not in routine 90 or 180 degree so they can be a 45 degree and 135 degree but the sum will be 180 degree this is called as a oblique astigmatism so you can very well say 150 and 30 that will be the sum will be 180 what is by oblique astigmatism in this type of regular astigmatism the two principal meridia are not at right angles to each other so there will be one may be at 30 degree another at 100 so their summation will not be 180 degree that is by oblique astigmatism what is the optics of regular astigmatism we know that what is the optics of myopia what is the optics of hypermetropia just like that regular astigmatism the parallel rays of light are not focused on a point but form two focal lines the refractive types depending upon the position of the two focal lines last to a few slides before i told something about strums conoid accordingly where the lines are focused whether one is focusing on the retina and another one is focusing in front of or behind the retina you can have a refractive types of regular astigmatism they are simple astigmatism compound astigmatism and mixed astigmatism what are they so what is simple astigmatism when one of the principal meridians is focused on the retina and the other is not focused on the retina but it is focused either in front of the retina it is called as a simple myopic astigmatism or one is focused on the retina and the other is focused behind the retina you can call it as a simple hypermetropic astigmatism and all these condition accommodation is relaxed in this picture you can see when one of the principal meridian is focused in front of the retina and the other is focused on the retina with accommodation is relaxed you call it as a simple myopic astigmatism so the example can be minus 0.5 diopter 90 degree so there can be only one that is a cylinder the patient can have a cylinder prescription only that is a simple myopic astigmatism just like the same in simple hyper hyperopic condition or hypermetropic when one of the principal meridian is focused behind the retina and one focused on the retina you can have a correction only required for one meridian other meridian is focused on the retina so in this patient you can have a plus 0.5 at 180 degree only cylinder will be required so it is called as a simple according to plus or minus you can call it simple hyperopic or simple myopic astigmatism what is compound astigmatism when both the principal meridians are focused either in front when the light is focused in front of the retina you call it as a myopic what when the two lines are focused in front of the retina you can call it as a compound both lines are in front of the retina so it is compound myopic astigmatism when both focal lines are behind the retina you call it as a compound hypermetropic astigmatism this is a compound myopic astigmatism in this picture you can see both the principal meridians are focused in front of the retina so what could be its prescription so it will have suppose like a minus 0.5 or minus 1 minus 0.5 at 90 degree so the patient will have a spherical as well as a cylinder correction you can call it as a spero cylinder he will require a spero cylinder spherical as well as cylindrical correction so it is called as compound myopic astigmatism just like another condition that is compound hypermic means when both principal meridians are focused 
behind the retina you call it as a compound hyper hypermetropic or hyperopic astigmatism so what will be the prescription there will be both plus plus spherical as well as plus cylinder so we can have a plus 0.5 plus 1 at 180 degree this is an example so you will have both plus signs this is called as a compound hyperwave then there will be a mixed astigmatism when one of the principal meridian is focused in front of the retina and the other is focused behind the retina you call it as a mixed astigmatism so there can be one axis will be focused or one meridian will be corrected by plus prescription or plus glass and another will be with a minus so it can have a spherical and cylinder prescription but the signs will be different one sign will be plus another will be minus so it is called as a mixed when both the signs are same you call it as a compound accordingly minus compound myopic if it is a plus compound hypermetropic and in mixed you will have a plus and minus signs different signs in one meridian eye is myopic and another meridian is hyperopic that is mixed as in such cases generally mixed astigmatism patient will not complain or will have less symptoms because the circle of least diffusion is formed on the retina and the patient will not have that much symptom so he can adjust so his vision is not comparatively less mixed astigmatism patient will have less complaints so we have seen regular astigmatism what is symmetrical astigmatism this is the principal meridians or axis of the two eyes are symmetrical means here we are seeing about both eyes now up till now we have seen what is the refraction in one eye so we have seen what is astigmatism with the rule astigmatism against the rule what is oblique and what is bioblique related with the one eye but when you are considering about two eyes symmetrical astigmatism means the principal meridians or axis of the two eyes right eye and left eye but if they are both symmetrical you call it as a symmetrical astigmatism the sum of the two axis of the two eyes equals approximately 180 degree we are talking about two eyes suppose in one eye the astigmatism is suppose 80 and in another eye is 100 the summation is 180 so you call it as a symmetrical astigmatism what is a symmetrical astigmatism the principal meridians or axis of the two eyes are not symmetrical the sum of the two axis of the two eyes does not equal approximately 180 degree so we call it as a asymmetrical the, the, you should not confuse it with about regular and irregular regular and irregular are the types of you are seeing in one eye and when we are talking about asymmetrical and as symmetrical astigmatism that is for the both eyes you are considering both eyes so what is the visual acuity simple or compound myopic astigmatism accommodation may make the retinal image even more blurry in simple or compound hyperopic accommodation may improve visual acuity to some extent and in mixed astigmatism just i have told the visual acuity is relatively good what are the symptoms by which a patient can come to your clinic the patient will have asthenopia blurred vision then he can have a elongation objects seeing so what is asthenopia asthenopia is means a tiredness of eyes and it is relieved by closing the eyes it is characterized by difficulty in focusing transient blurred vision dull ache in eyes frontal headache and sometimes nausea and even there is a drowsiness especially marked in low astigmatism because he has to try to focus more 
then there is a blurred vision and defective vision reported when the astigmatism is more than one diopter elongation objects that is a proportion to the degree and type of astigmatism may be noticed in high astigmatism then the distorted vision later confusion asthenopia headache squinting just i mentioned then the signs you can see in a patient there is a half closure of the lid like myopes the astigmatic patients may half shut the eye in to achieve a greater clarity of asthenopic uh, stenopic vision then there is a tilting of head the astigmatic patient may exceptionally develop a torticollis in attempt to bring their axis nearer to the horizontal or vertical meridian when you see with a fundoscope you can see a oval or uh, tilted optic disc and with a retinoscope or auto refractometry you can see different power in two meridia investigations you are doing visual acuity test on a snell and chart distance and near auto refraction keratometry and retinoscopy monocular subjective refraction including jackson's cross cylinder so what is the management of regular astigmatism there is optical treatment that is with a spectacle or contact lens and surgical correction of astigmatism so in optical treatment of regular astigmatism there is a prescription of appropriate cylindrical lens and that is discovered after refraction spectacles with full correction of cylindrical power and appropriate axis should be used contact lenses you can have a rigid contact lenses may correct up to 2 to 3 of regular astigmatism and the surgical treatment so cylindrical lenses and spiro cylindrical lenses in spectacle and contact lenses for simple astigmatism and refractive surgery is also used toric contact lens you can just remember toric soft contact lenses or toric rigid gas permeable contact lenses are used for regular astigmatism in refractive surgery that is astigmatic keratotomy just you can know this uh, name photo astigmatic refractive keratotomy that is park and lasik in examination the examiner can ask you the long form of lasik so you should know what is the meaning of lasik we have completed regular astigmatism what is irregular it is characterized by an irregular change of refractive power in different media because the cornea is not regular in all its meridian it is irregular so the refraction becomes irregular there is no regular refraction when the two principal meridians are not perpendicular to each other it is because of curvature of any one meridian is not uniform it can be associated with trauma disease or degeneration so when there is a change in the corneal curvatures and they are unequal they are not regular it is giving an irregular astigmatism so curvatural irregular astigmatism found in patient with extensive corneal scars or keratoconus index irregular astigmatism is due to variable refractive index in different parts of the crystalline lens what are the clinical features symptoms are defective vision distortion of object just like the regular astigmatism and there can be a polypia because there is a irregular refraction from different sectors retinoscopy slit lamp examination placido disc tag and photokeratoscopy and computerized corneal topography they can give photographic record of irregular corneal curvature even on window reflex you can say you can see the irregularity of the corneal surface and when the cornea is irregular we will get an irregular astigmatism the treatment is same for this optical treatment you have used contact lens or phototherapeutic keratotomy and surgical so here with we are 
finishing our optics and refraction topic for the general read you have to read about anisometropia anisoconia and aphakia accommodation and its anomalies also you have to read now what is the physiology of accommodation that has been done in your physiology class also in your uh, uh, tenure so you can read anisometropia and then uh, what is the refraction or anisoconia and the physiology of accommodation thank you